guys and welcome to Simplicity Electricity. So I thought I would make this video just kind of introduce to you guys my channel and tell you what it's all about and what you can be expecting to see in the future. Okay, so on this channel you're going to see a lot of old routers, networking devices, network switches, and just really any old electronic that I think is kind of cool that I could do a review on and just show you guys how it functions and things like that. In every one of my videos, I try to make things as simple as possible, explaining things simply, what they do, how you use them, and just things like that. Um, you can expect to see a lot of networking equipment, as I stated before, but you can also expect to see a lot of just old devices and things that you just wouldn't normally see. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm gonna make my first video about a router. Now it's going to be this router right here. So a lot of you have probably seen one of these things around before and most of you probably know what it is already but if you don't that's perfectly fine. A lot of people don't. So what this is is a Netgear router and you may wonder what is a router. A router is a device that gives you a Wi-Fi signal and an Ethernet signal in your house. So when you have to extend your wireless coverage, maybe you're in a different part of the house and your Wi-Fi doesn't get there really good, this is your go-to guy. So this particular one is known as the Netgear Wireless G Series. Now it does have a specific model number on the bottom, Wireless G Router WGR614V9. So a lot of these routers, you're going to see this on the bottom, especially with these turtle shell routers, which is why I like to call them because of the shape they have. It's uh, unique only to Netgear. You're going to notice that they all pretty much look the same, and on the bottom this may say something different. Well, they are pretty much the same to be honest with you. Um, this right here is the model and the version of the model. So what does that mean? Well, I'll explain that here in a minute. But basically, all that you need to know is that this router is of the Wireless G series. So what does that mean? A Wireless G router is a router that was made roughly a little bit before 2010, kind of, maybe 2005, somewhere in that range. And what they basically did was what our Wi-Fi routers do today. They gave internet and they provided a strong internet connection and extended an internet signal. Now... Are these devices, especially let's just say this one in particular, is it still up to standards with today's modern Wi-Fi demands, uses, things like that? Well, that's a pretty tough question to answer actually. It really just kind of depends on who's using it. Someone who's a heavy duty gamer, maybe you're using your internet all day, 24 seven, your PC, and maybe you have a lot of people in this household using the internet at the same time well this particular one this particular model may not be for you if you have a lot of people trying to use the internet at once now it's still just as fast as a lot of routers are today I mean if if you have a slower internet connection like one that's maybe below 25 megabits per second then you're probably not going to notice much of a difference between this router and the one that you already have or the one that you're planning on getting or anything like that. Um, really though, if you're just the average user, you're in a one or two person home and you only occasionally get on the internet or you could even be on a whole lot but you're not using a lot of internet demanding things, then this would probably be a pretty good device for you. Uh, you can usually buy them on eBay for 10 to $20 and yeah, um, let's go ahead and have a look at this thing. So if you look on the front, you have your power button, your check light, and some of the newer ones don't have this. Um, don't worry about this, really. Just worry about the power button. When it turns green, the thing is on. You all can kind of get that. Uh, you have the Wi-Fi signal. This is the button. When it lights up, it lets you know that it is sending out a wireless signal. Uh, you have the internet signal. So... You can still power this device on and it will show up, but until you connect internet to it, uh, this button will actually not light up. And I'll explain how to do all that here in a minute. And then you have one, two, three, and four, and those coincide with these ports on the back. 
All right, so if you're not lost already, um, let me go ahead and explain the back to you. So you're gonna have a few things on the back. Now again, these are different depending on you know what version you have. So this is version nine. Now say you had version 10 or something like that, you may have a power button right here or on version eight or whatever, uh, you may actually not even have this over here. It's, you don't really need to worry about it. In the end, they're all pretty much the same. So over here, you're gonna notice all these little bitty holes. This is to let air flow into the device to keep it pretty cool. Uh, you have your Wi-Fi antenna and it's extendable, uh, kinda anyway. And right here, you're gonna notice this is a different shape than the rest of them. This is your reset button. And I'll explain what that does here in a second. Uh, you have your uplink. Well, this is what you would connect to your existing modem or cable connection or whatever you already have. Um, to be honest with you, if you're someone who maybe has a mobile hotspot, such as this one, maybe you got one by AT&T or your service provider, uh, this video may not be for you because I am not sure if there is any way that you can get these two devices to work with each other. Because usually you have to have something that plugs in or has ports like this on the back, these ethernet ports. So if this is how you get Wi-Fi or internet in your home, this may not be the video for you. But back to it. Okay, so you would connect this to your modem and it would give this device internet. And these ports right here, you could connect to, say, a computer, a gaming console, a smart TV, and another router if you need to extend the signal further. I'll explain what all these go to here in a minute if you're lost. And over here is your power input. Now, something I need to tell you guys is that if you were first getting this device, I'm assuming that maybe you bought it used at a flea market or something like that. Something you always need to do is see if it has a power input that came with it. So like for this specific one, it needs a 12 volts, one amp power input. Now, I get that a lot of times you're gonna get one of these and it's not gonna have a power input. And that is perfectly understandable. It happens all the time, but you may still be wondering, well, if I don't have the power input, how's the device gonna work? Well, you if you can actually find a uh, plug-in that has this on the bottom of it, 12 volts, 1 amp, then you should be pretty good to go because this device will support, it doesn't necessarily need the thing that it came with, the plug-in. It can work with pretty much any of them. So let me give you an example. Now this is a plain power brick and on the end it has one of those little round plug-ins that you see. So you can't just plug any old plug-in into here. You have to look on the bottom of it or somewhere around here and you'll see that it says 5 volts, 0.6 amps. So that means that it definitely will not work for this device. Even if the little part down here fits in here, then it will not work for this device. You need one that is 12 volts and 1 amp. Now you may be asking, can I use one that's maybe 12 volts and 2 amps? Well, you're welcome to try that, but it's at your own risk. If you use something that's a higher power rating than what is labeled on the bottom or here, then there's no guarantee that it won't fry your device. If you use something less than that, well, then your device may not come on at all. It's really up to you. But um, overall, uh, you usually don't have to worry about this too much. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's not much else I can say about this device. Now, newer versions of this device are part of the Wireless N series. So there's Wireless B, there's Wireless G, there's Wireless N, and there's Wireless AC. And each of those correspond to the generations of devices like this. So Wireless B, you'd see that anywhere from 2005 and back to maybe 2000. Wireless G was from about 2005 to 2010, roughly. Uh, 2010 to 2015, we were in the Wireless N series. And now in 2017, you're going to see a lot of devices that have Wireless AC. But um, 
I wouldn't worry too much about uh, what your device is. As long as it's wireless G, N, or AC, you should be good, but I strongly do not recommend wireless B. And how you can tell, you just look up your device, you look up the model number, and you see what it supports. But like, this is a wireless G. I know that for a fact. Okay, uh, well, let's go into this device. I'll show you guys how to hook it up to a computer because oftentimes when you get it, it's gonna have a password on it and it's gonna really irritate you because you're not gonna know how to access the Wi-Fi on it. Well, I'm gonna show you how to plug it in, what to hook it up to, and we're gonna make it as simple as possible. Okay guys, so now that I have my device, I have three cables here. So one of these cables is, of course, the power cable. One of these cables goes to my modem, which is located in another part of the house. And one of these cables is plugged directly into the back of my desktop computer. So something that's important to know is that when you're connecting a device like this to your computer, um, you probably don't want to have your computer connected to the Wi-Fi or any other internet plug-in or anything like that. You really just want it connected to this device and this device alone. And I also recommend that you don't have anything running in the background. It's kind of your whole computer session needs to be devoted to this. Now it won't take but a minute to get the settings right and everything, but um, one more thing to note. I know that a lot of people out there probably have laptops that do not have an ethernet port or an internet jack as some people call it on their computer. Now it's a lot easier to do this setup on a desktop uh, personally, but you can do the same on a laptop. You usually just have to get a USB to ethernet adapter and then you would treat this cable the same. You would just plug it into your computer and plug it into the back of this. All right, now what you're gonna to wanna to do is, I can't show it in the video because I'm holding my camera with one hand, but you're gonna to wanna to take the modem plug-in. So this is plugged into your modem. It's probably a really long cable and you're gonna to wanna to plug it in right here in this yellow port. Now, some of the ports are blue on some devices. I've even seen some that are green, but you're gonna to wanna to look for a port on your device that looks completely different from the others. It's usually gonna be either a little bit farther away, it's gonna be a different color, or it's gonna say uplink. This one won't say it, but it'll say uplink right here, something like that. Now on your modems, I can't guarantee what you're gonna see, but on the modem, just find a port that looks like this, plug an ethernet cable into it, run it to this device, and plug it in here. It's that simple. Do this first. Next, use one of these and plug it into the back of your computer. I uh, usually try to go for one in the middle because sometimes there's one to the side that has a special assignment that I say a special assignment, but it's attached to this in some way. It's a special uplink. It's easier just to go for one of them in the middle for my personal recommendation. And then lastly, you want to plug in the power. Now, some of these, like I said before, have power buttons, but um, you should know how to turn those on and off. Uh, just plug in the power and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. So I just went ahead and plugged them in, as you can see here. And what the device is going to do is it's going to slowly take its time to start up. I've seen some devices that will take anywhere from three to five minutes to start up. But this little Netgear router right here can do it pretty quick. Personally, this is my favorite router because, I mean, it's old, but it's tough. It does everything it's supposed to do, and it's extremely easy to use. Okay, so this means that we're connected to the computer. Any one of these would glow, depending on where we plugged in that black cable. Okay, it is now sending off a Wi-Fi signal. That's what that means. Okay, it is powered on, but the device still isn't ready. It's still trying to connect to the internet, and this light will come on here in a second. Again, it will take a minute. Now, 
you know, lights will be different colors. Some of them will be blue or whatever, but you should be able to tell pretty quick. I mean, if your device is working or not, like I said, it will take a minute, but it comes up and I guess the check mark won't come on this time. And if you look on your PC, you're going to see something like this pop up. Now it's going to say network, whatever the number may be different. It may be two, three, four, whatever. Don't worry about the network number. Uh, you're just going to want to allow this device into your um, computer. And one more thing, the reset button on the back, usually before you even turn the device, like, well, you need to turn it on, but before you plug it into your computer and get this to come up, I'd recommend holding it down for 30 seconds and letting the power button glow and stuff like that. Now, there's plenty of people on the internet and on YouTube who explain this in detail how to do it. I personally don't always do it this way and you know that's usually not safe because you never know there could be some master hacker out there who put something on this device but I'm not too worried about it but like I said always press the reset button and hold it down for 30 seconds or however long uh, the manual may say alright so let's jump into the computer and let's see what it holds all right, now that my screen's recording, uh, let's begin with how to get onto your device's settings and user interface. How exciting. Not really. Well, maybe. Who knows? But anyway, so after you click yes over here, sometimes uh, your internet browser may come up with the device's website to get to its user interface. Uh, now, this is actually really good. It means that your device is probably fairly new and it works pretty well. But um, for older devices like this, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Now, I wanted to show you guys really quick. Uh, this is the power adapter that I'm using for this device that you see in the video. Uh, 12 volts, 1 amp. Remember, it needs to be the same as this. If you're in a stretch and you need one that's maybe 12 volts and 2 amps, I can't stop you from doing that, but I can't promise that it won't hurt your device. Alright, so let's get to it. So you're going to want to open up your internet browser. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you're using. I'm using Chrome, but any of them work. And what most people do to get into their router is they'll go up here and they're going to type in 192.168.something.something. So what is this? When you type in a number like this, it allows you to go into a router's user interface settings to change things, change the password, the router's name, stuff like that. Um, for this device and for the sake of this video, I personally don't want you to worry about numbers like these right now. Um, we'll cover those in later videos. Uh, like I said, for your specific device, the number is going to be different, like 192.168.1.1 is going to be for a Linksys or a Belkin router possibly, but not a Netgear. So again, don't worry about that right now. Um, let's just make this really simple because that's what this channel is all about. Type in this, www.routerlogin.net. And this will almost always work for older Netgear routers. And it's going to take a second to access the website. But when it does, I'll show you exactly what to do. All right. It came up. So if this is a device that, <clears throat> that maybe you didn't own previously or it's completely blank, hasn't been set or anything like that, then you're going to be prompted to enter something here. Now, this is always scary for so many people because... They always think, I don't know the username, and I don't know the password. Well, the good news, if you press that reset button, or even if you didn't, what you can do is you can type in admin for the password. Now, again, you can look it up for different routers and different devices. Uh, this is going to be different. Some of them, all you have to do is just leave the username blank and enter a simple password. But for this specific one, like I said, we're just going to show what it does and make it simple. So the username is admin, and the password is, you guessed it, password. All right. Now, I personally, like I said, I didn't press the reset button. Now, sometimes if you don't press that reset button, you may not even get this far. 
but I didn't have to for this specific device so I'm gonna go ahead and click login uh, do I want to save the password never okay so sometimes when you get devices like these um, it'll check for updated firmware up on login I really don't worry about any of this stuff just yet because this is probably where a lot of people get intimidated because they don't really know what's going on or stuff like that I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it because I don't need that so you may be wondering what is all this stuff this is so scary I don't know what I'm doing well don't worry about it at all because I'm gonna show you exactly what to do so if you're first getting this device it doesn't matter if you bought it from the store it doesn't matter if you bought it used uh, you're probably gonna want to go and find this revert to factory default settings so what this does is when you get this device if you click this button it doesn't matter who's used it in the past it doesn't matter how long it's been used when you click this button the device's settings get erased it's basically like getting a brand new phone um, it is completely factory new uh, no one's information is on it everything is brand new and the device will basically pretend like it's never had an owner before so you can usually find uh, this setting under maintenance or administration now it's going to look different this is just for Netgear this is just for Netgear but like I said uh, usually under maintenance or administration in just about any router uh, somewhere around there okay so I am not going to click this button because this router already belongs to me it's my router I've gone through this process before um, up here you can see a little bit of information you can see your router model and what version of that model it is alright so let's kind of look around here let's look at our basic settings and judging from this I wouldn't really worry about any of this because this is we're making the video as simple as possible now wireless settings this is what you need to worry about alright so you're gonna see a few things under wireless settings so you're gonna see your routers name or its SSID what is this well when a router comes up on your phone or when internet comes up on your phone you always see those silly names like get your own Wi-Fi or keep out or like this one is right here and stuff like that and that's basically the name that the router has that's the name that is displayed to the average person and um, I actually think this is a pretty funny name but I'm gonna change it let's just change it to Wi-Fi I'm typing with one hand here and uh, sometimes it'll have a previous saying they'll come up again don't worry about that just name it whatever you want to um, the region uh, that's pretty self-explanatory uh, it's gonna have a thing called channel some of them have this option some of them don't always leave it to auto unless you are somebody who has done this many times before it, I'm making this video for someone who is just brand new to it maybe someone who doesn't really feel comfortable and they just want to explain to them in a very simple way leave this to auto you don't need to worry about that and we have the mode here so remember earlier how I was talking about different wireless generations and things like that well some devices that were made in a certain year uh, can only be supported by a certain wireless um, generation like BNG for example that's why it gives you this option so like if you don't want any old devices on your network that support only wireless B then you would select this option really though it doesn't matter um, if you have a new router an old router anything like that you always probably want to click the one that has the most options because a generation router will support itself and the generation behind it so like a wireless G router will support a wireless B uh, a wireless N router will support G B and N and so on and so forth all right let's go down here so I'm assuming that if you're watching this this is maybe a router in your house or a very small business or something like that if you want the easiest or simplest way to set it up um, you can choose not to have any security options which I really don't recommend you always need to have a password on your device um, 
Let's go for the WPA2 setting. Uh, I always recommend that you get WPA2 or WPA or really any combination of these three. Just if it shows you something like this where you can just make a simple password, then that's what you want to go with. But usually pick WPA2 or something like that. And you can put in a password between 8 and 63 characters. So for example, I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to click apply. Always click apply at the bottom if it has that option so it updates everything. Okay, um, you really that's what most people probably get stuck on uh, these are just a bunch of random settings again if you're not someone who's experienced don't don't really worry about all this just make it easy on yourself um, they also have another wireless settings options um, with this actually you may need this um, what this basically does is um, I'm actually not sure what WMM is off the top of my head but um, with some routers you can actually disable the broadcast so what that means is when uh, people try to connect to your Wi-Fi they won't actually be able to see your Wi-Fi's name it may not even show that there's Wi-Fi in the area I mean but if you're connected to it via Ethernet or one of the ports on the back of your router like I showed you earlier like with the yellow one and the four uh, plain colored ones then you can actually disable this and no one can steal your Wi-Fi or anything like that but I'm not gonna really worry about that um, here you can see some things about your router again I wouldn't really worry about any of that um, let's look at this thing it's called the router upgrade so what is this well a lot of times routers are kind of like phones you can update them and stuff like that but um some of them you can uh, upgrade even if they're really old so like this one for example so like it has check for new version upon login well I don't want it to check every time I log on usually most routers can kind of just uh, check for new versions themselves and they'll update themselves when you're not using the device like it 3 a.m. in the morning that's why you may not have internet because your thing is updating itself and uh, usually they have an option where you can check for a new version online now I'm not gonna do that because I'm not really too worried about uh, the firmware version that I have the only time that you really need to worry about that is maybe if your router has gotten slow over the years maybe it's not as fast as it used to be your internet is slower for some reason and you don't know why usually updating it can help that problem not always but usually and a lot of times even if you don't have this option you can check online and um, you can upload a file here uh, personally I'd recommend that you be really careful when doing this because there's a lot of um, firmware updates for this router it's like like I said it's like updating your phone what if you were just updating your phone and the entire thing crashed and didn't work again well the same can happen for your router if you really don't know where you're looking to uh, get an update from so like if you can't check on the internet you gotta check on the internet if that makes any sense you actually have to go out there and hunt for it yourself which is not always the safest thing but sometimes it's what you got to do all right and um, this is pretty much the last thing I'm going to show you guys last thing you need to worry about you have the option to save a current copy of your settings which after all I just showed you unless you're going into settings like these or like these I wouldn't worry about this if this is brand new to you and you don't really know what you're doing no offense but uh, you don't really need this and you can choose to restore save settings from a file so if you've actually put a lot of time maybe an hour or two into getting all the settings that you want just right and you do know what you're doing then why not go ahead and save them somewhere on your computer that way if your router does crash or your computer crashes or something really bad just happens you have a backup file alright well that is pretty much it for this video um, and that's really all that you need to see about this router everything else is pretty self-explanatory 
Well, uh, this has been Simplicity Electricity's first video, and I will see you all later.